So we're at the back end of Money Vibe after Jackie was here last week. But I just want you to know that this stuff works. Last week in our offering, we deposited more than we have since the day I got here. You did that. But I figured we had focused on money. I made some people nervous when I said I'm going to do this series. And I had some people who, from the outside, who came and said, I can't believe I came to a church and they talk about money. The possibility of having more. That's a good thing. But I didn't want to lose focus and desire. And so what I did, because of the Sunday we had the possibility of ice and everything, I moved it here and I'm going to look at focus and desire more from our spiritual journey than from the money box. Because all the great teachers say that you have to have these two to do anything great in your life. To make any change from where you are at this moment to something more or different or better that you want for yourself, we must have focus and desire. And these are acquired <coughs> abilities. They are like a muscle. And the more we learn how to focus, the more our focus muscle gets stronger. And same with desire. We can change desire because all of this is based on us having free will choice to decide how much of this we want. And so we're going to take a look from a more of our spiritual journey perspective today because these two are so paramountly important. As we finished the last time, we talked about mastery. Who here wants to master their lives? Come on now. Y'all don't want to master your own life. You just want to float around and let whatever happens happen to you. Guess what? You're going to be successful. You will bring more of that into your life. But looking at if you want to become a master of your life, and every one of us has that God-given right. We've been told it's our right to become masters of our own life while we're here in this planet of lessons. Or we can continue to go unconscious and let whatever belief systems we have in our subconscious that were imprinted from the time we were seven, and we'll just keep repeating those year after year, decade after decade. That's a choice we all have. But if we truly want to look to become masters of our lives, these are two things that Jackie talked about that I took out of her book. It's the intersection of your vibe, your consciousness, your energy, and focused action. Now, how many of you know people who are always busy and never get anything done? That is not what we're talking about here. That is not focused action. That's, oh my God, I'm so busy, I can't do anything different. But that ain't going to get you anywhere but exactly what you're doing right now. It'll keep repeating itself year, year after year. But focused action in a vibe that's going higher you will begin to bring more and more into your life of what you want, I hope. We're focused on bringing more good into our lives. But we have to balance that with this. Do you want to know how to make God laugh? I made God laugh most of my life, and you know how I did that? I told her my plans. I thought I knew better. I thought I knew exactly what I needed to do, and I was really good with focus and desire and the mental science and all that. I can make things happen. But it was from my finite brain that I was deciding what was best. And so you want to marry what we just had in that with also understanding what the divine plan is for you. And each and every one of us enter this planet with a divine plan. Most of us leave this planet and never figured out what it was. I see that all the time, don't you? But we don't have to do that. We can find out why we're here. And so that we can leave this planet knowing that we completed whatever that divine design was for the short time we're here. Here's what the master teacher Jesus said. He approached it this way. I of myself can do nothing. Now, does that sound like a man who's going to be put up on a cross and called a savior of the world? I don't think so. He said, I didn't do anything. I can't of myself be or do anything. 
probably not what you've been taught about him, has it? But it's his words. He said it. And I'm so glad he did because it's exactly became the model for me. When I come in here every Monday, I go, I don't have a clue what I'm doing. I myself cannot be or do anything. And I open up to the divine beginning to speak. We have to ask, number one, and then we have to shut up and listen. Otherwise, as we're told, it goes right over because we're so busy talking. It's like, well, I don't have any divine design. Nobody talks to me. Yeah, because you are being quiet. You have to ask and be quiet. Who did the work, he said? The Father within. Now, we've talked about this word, Father within, many times. You can put in the Christ. You can put in the I am. You can put Atman as uh, Krishna did. You can put the Tao as Lao Tzu did. It all means the same. It's a divine energy that flows through you. That intelligence that goes way beyond any human understanding is available to you and I if we ask and be quiet and listen. I didn't do anything, he said. Of recorded miracles, he has the most. He's a winner, gold star. 36, 26 of them physical. Buddha did a whole bunch. We don't know. They aren't recorded like they were in Jesus' work. We know Shankara from uh, India did many miracles. And so did Lao Tzu in China. But these are people who said, I can't do anything. They all said the same thing. But it's this energy, this intelligence, this power that flows through me and out of me does it all. So how do we know? I already gave you the clue. How do we know if it's our divine design? How do we know it's of the creative intelligence of the universe? How do we know it's from God or allness or whatever word that you use there? How do we know? Very simple. Ask. And listen. And when you got confused in your life, if you look back over your past, you know, I don't spend any time, I try not to spend any time in the past, but if you do, to look at this, go back to when you made a major mistake and it showed up and it changed the trajectory of your life. I guarantee you, you hadn't asked and listened. And you can see that time and time and time and time again. It's okay, okay enough already. That's where I finally got in my life. It's like I made it. I learned from all the mistakes. What did I learn from the mistakes? I learned to stop doing what I was doing and begin to slow down and ask the divine and begin to listen. Focus is so important in today's world. We have a society that's creating adult ADD. We truly do. We have so much information coming at us from so many places. We have a society right now that walks around looking at an iPhone. And we're on Facebook and Twitter and emails and texts and TVs. And, and we have so much coming at us from so many places. We have forgotten how to focus. And focus is paramount. If you want to make a change in your life, and focus is a true will no matter what you do in life. But I'm going to use it for the spiritual journey today. You know, when Kate wanted to learn to play the piano, she bought a piano and she bought sheet music, but she couldn't play the piano. She had to focus and have the desire to learn, to be able to offset what all her friends were doing. They were outside playing, were they not? They were like, come on, Kate, let's go do whatever. Kate says, no, I gotta focus. And this is true in any human endeavor. If you wanna go from status quo, to something better, you have to learn how to focus. And it is an acquired process. Focus, another, one of the ways to look at focus is follow one course until you're successful, stands for. But what happens to the majority of us, we get pulled left and pulled right and pulled up and pulled down. At the end of the week we go, oh yeah, I was gonna do that, but I didn't. Why not? Because we lack focus. One of the greatest, uh, here's a bunch of quotes that uh, you'll be able to see, but the one that I found really interesting is Aristotle said, it's broken focus that takes us out of being great. We get it, we have a, a desire, we have a wish, 
turns it into desire, we want to grow to this level, and what happens? We lose our focus, and we're off somewhere else. The only reason men or women fail is because of broken focus. The only reason. In my early 20s, I was, um, I had a sensei Kande who was my karate instructor. I was trained under Muda Kwan, and I had gotten to a couple levels of black belt, and I was into full contact karate back in the day before it became, you know, people made millions of dollars doing it. And he trained me to focus by using a candle in a dark room. And he had me start out with one minute one day, next day, two minutes. And in 30 days, you can take your focus and you can up your focus muscle like you've never believed. What I do today is take my iPhone, set the alarm for one minute, next day do two minutes, and by 30 days, you've got 30 minutes of focus. And you're gonna see focus begin to happen for you all throughout your life. Because once you learn how to focus, then you can use it for anything that happens in your life and especially in your spiritual journey. This practice was one of the greatest things that I was ever given as one of my teachers because it has stayed with me my whole life. And the ability to focus and get single-minded is one of the greatest things that any of us can learn to do. And if you wanna take your spiritual journey from here to another place, take the next 30 days and do this. I challenge you to do it and not give it up because it's not easy, but it's a practice at the end of it. You're gonna say, oh, I can't believe how I can focus now, and all the stuff going on around me no longer bothers me. Focus is acquired. Focus on the present. The past will take care of itself. How many people around you are still talking about the past? What do you do when that happens? What I do is I focus on the present. This again is a choice that you have. Every second of every minute of every precious day that you're talking and thinking and feeling about the past, you are not in the magic of the present. It's a habit. And what happens is you go back to the past and you take that event and you bring it into the present and make it present for yourself. It has no power back there if you leave it there. But we run into these habits. It may be acquired through your family. But when you're around people who continue to go back in the past, keep bringing yourself, focus back on that candle. I'm staying in the present. They can go do that if they want. But I'm not going to leave this eternal present moment because it's the only one you and I have. Don't waste it on the past. And the master teacher, Jesus, taught very strongly about this. Allow the dead to bury the dead in the past. Stay out of it. Don't even go there. If you focus on the hurt, you will continue to suffer. If you focus on the lesson, you'll continue to grow. Where's your focus? We all have this ability to go one or the other. What are we focusing on will change the trajectory of your day and your life. Focus on the outcome, not the obstacle. How many of us see people and friends that are all they want to talk is how about difficult it is, or oh my God, I'm so It ends up being what I call E or energy. <laughs> Y'all been around those folks? They don't know what Tigger's energy is like. They're all down in the muck in the weeds with the Eeyore and all, ain't it awful? That's nothing but focus. And it's a decision to keep doing what they've been doing their whole lives. And if they would just swing their focus to what's coming and what they can do in the present, it all will go away because there is no power in the past unless you give it or I. Tony Robbins says this, your life is controlled by what you focus on. Why is that true? One of the things we learned in Qigong is wherever you focus, the energy goes. In your body, if you've got an issue in the knee, focus on the knee, bring the energy in, and you'll have healing. But it's the same thing in your emotions. It's the same thing in your spiritual life. 
Whatever you focus on, your life follows. It's the energy follows from you. So all the divine energy is flowing through each of us sitting here today. You take that energy and you choose by your choice and decision of focus where that energy goes. And everyone in here has this access to the, exactly the same amount of energy. There are no gurus. There is no one that has more access to God than anyone else. There only is God. Now, do some people, are they more clear in what they focus on and bring into their lives? Absolutely. But anyone who sets themselves up a guru, run. There are no gurus except the I am within you. Focus on what's true for you and what you want to bring in more good for your life. Winners focus on winning, losers focus on the winners. This is another way of saying the critics on the sideline never accomplish anything. They just try to bring down the people who are trying to do something good. Don't let that be your focus. Focus on winning for you. Because that's all you have to do. And it's all I have to do. Jackie Woodside had this formula that's been shown by many people over and over again. Some steps, be clear, what's the focus? Be clear on what you value. Establish what it is you want. This is where those in Tuesday night class know I beat this and beat it. You gotta write it down. And you will not believe how many people resist for years and decades. I'll coach them and I'll say, well, did you write it down? Well, no, I got it up here. No, you gotta write it. Because writing it brings it into the physical. More and more people resist that, I don't get it. It's one of the tools that will change your focus. It's one of the tools that will change your life. It's like, oh no, I'm holding it up here, I got it. You know how often those little thoughts just flitter away? And then the one comes in, no focus. Write it down. You have gotta be focused to write it down at a different level than it floating through your mind. Stay focused, take action. Do you know your compelling why of whatever you want to bring into your life? You gotta be able to answer this. When someone wakes you up in the middle of the night at 1.30 and says, what is your compelling why? You know. <laughs> and if you don't know, you are not focused. And you're just gonna keep meandering around through life and go, well, ten, another 10 years. We'll be sitting here at 2030 going, well, how's it going for the last decade? And you say, well, kind of the same as it was in 2020. Who wants that? If the universe has grown at 12% a year or more, they think now that the, uh, the telescopes are bringing back. By the way, did anybody see the new massive black hole? Yeah. It's bigger than any theory could conceive. It doesn't exist according to the scientists, but the Telescope says, there it is. It's so much bigger and so much more grand and so much more amazing than you and I can even imagine. And we're part of it and it's inside of us. So desire, where's the word desire come from? Of the Father. The desires that you have that are in alignment with, is it beautiful? Is it good? Is it true? Are the desires that you have come through from spirit for you? Make them happen. Don't let it go, oh, well, you know, I'll take care of that next year. Mm -mm, doesn't work. Victor Frankl is probably a human being who saw more human tragedy than anyone at, at, back in uh, Germany. And for those that haven't read his book, The Man's Search for Meaning is one of the most powerful books. But he says this, success, whether it's in your spiritual life or not, it's like happiness cannot be pursued. It has to ensue, and it happens when you set your intention something greater than oneself. We all saw what happened in Thanksgiving when we did love in action. We did something that was greater than ourselves. And every one of us participated was blessed. You can't even remember what the turkey tastes like now. But you can remember what it felt like to be blessed. And that's what he's talking about. It ensues by making decisions that are different than you've been making. Your desire to change must be greater than your desire to stay the same. Who chooses that? You do. For you, I choose it for me. 
If you don't choose the greater desire, you will continue to do what you've been doing and thinking that it's going to change. And our brother Albert Einstein said that's called insanity. It doesn't work. It won't happen. We have to desire the change and use the focus to bring it about. Van Gogh said this, when you make that decision, providence moves. Doors open. We hear these stories all the time in our Tuesday night class, people are talking about. When they get clear, when they get focused, when they're doing the work, all of a sudden this door opens or this thing happens or this. That's what he's talking about here. But the action is the magic, the power, the grace. We don't teach here that you go sit in the cave and go home. Well, you could do that for a day or two or maybe, but not in your lifetime. This is about practical spirituality that we implant into our daily day and it changes who and what we do and what we are. That's practical spirituality to me. And that's what he's talking about. When you get clear, when you focus, when you have the intense desire. Jackie gave us this formula, clarity, focus, Prudent action, we've already talked about how important that is. Prudent action is, will it get me to where I want to go? And your high vibe, your high energy, your high consciousness will give you the results that you want. This is a proven formula. It's been proven thousands of years ago. This is not new with Jackie. Woodside, there's one, one truth, many voices. But she's bringing it up in a way for us to remember to do it. And if you're not getting the results you want in your life, go back to the formula and say, what's missing here? There's only three. You're either missing focus, you're either missing prudent action, or your vibe is too low. Change of one of those three or all three of them and you're gonna get the results. It's part of the process though. And the question is, how do you know if your desire is authentic? A lot of people get stuck in that. Well, I don't know if my, my, my desire is really what God wants for me. Just do it, you'll find out. Stop thinking about that. And along the way, you'll make adjustments and say, well, now it seems to be a little out of alignment, but here's my take. Is it good? Is it beautiful? Is it true? If the answer is yes, do it. And you'll probably be in alignment with the divine. Are you willing to do the work? Are you ready to sacrifice? Does it light you up? You all know what it means to be lit up? I hope. You don't come, if you come to Unity of Harrisburg and don't know what it means to be lit up inside, we have some talking to do. You need to know what that is because you've got to feel it because that's going to guide you. You have genuine skill. You know, I, I can't make the goal for me to be the starting center for an NBA team. Right? It's not authentic. I'd love to be that, but I'm not seven foot tall. You know, and I can't jump over top of the rim. So it needs to be authentic. It needs to be in alignment with what your desires and your abilities are. But that's so cool if you have the enthusiasm to get it and then you're willing to persist over time. Number five is so important because so many people don't persist. And why don't they persist? They don't have focus and they don't have clarity and desire. And then another rabbit trail will take them off left and right and they, they missed the whole process. Napoleon Hill was the first uh, New Thought author that I read. I was 16, and I was so enamored with his book, I read it three times. It's a thick book. And I kept going back, because at that time I lived in a little town named Landisville, and they would bring it from Lancaster in a bookmobile, and they would, I'd check it out, and I would go back every two weeks, and I'd say, I need to check this out again. She said, are you still reading? I said, no, second time, third time. And I didn't know at the time that it was new thought. But if you read Think and Grow Rich, it's unity. It's science of the mind put in a book. And I don't know if you know this story, but Napoleon Hill was being interviewed by Carnegie for this project. And when he asked, he told him what it was. He had just come out of law school. He had all this debt from law school back in the 1920s. And he said to him, this is what I'll do. I'll introduce you to all the major successful people in the country. No money. You gotta apply the principles. You want the job. And he had a stopwatch under the desk. And he had 60 seconds to decide. And everyone else 
who had come in never decided. And when he decided yes to do that, he had the opportunity to meet all the best people in the country and to write this whole book, who made his life completely successful over time. No money, just came out of law school, and he had that conviction, said yes to that. So what he said is the starting point of all achievement is desire. Desire backed by faith that knows no such word is impossible. Have you ever heard yourself say something's impossible? Then you probably don't have the faith behind it to go to the next level to make it happen. And here was his formula for turning your vision, your dreams into reality. Determine what you want, determine what you'll give in return for getting it. Establish a definite date by which you will have your intended good. Create a defined plan for carrying on your desire. Write a, write, write <laughs> a clear, concise statement of all of it. And then read this statement twice daily. First when you get up and before you go to bed at night. That practice has stayed with me all those years. In fact, when I was 16, and I went back, that was 1969. I, when I read this, I put it into practice. And what I put into practice was this. By the time I'm 40, I will be a vice president of a major corporation. Now, my family was Mennonite, most of them dairy farmers. We didn't play golf. Nobody belonged to the right country club. I didn't have an MBA from the right school. I had no reason to ever believe that I could be a vice president of a major corporation. None, nada, nothing. But I took what he said after reading it, and I said, this man makes more sense than anybody I had taught, I read up to that time, and implemented this. And I saw that sign, that little sign on the door said, Vice President Dan Landis. Now, if I knew what I knew today, I would have made it 20 years and I'd gone for president, but I didn't. This was as far as I thought I was worthy of being vice president, and I thought it would take me till I was 40. In 1992, at 39 and a half, I was promoted to Vice President General Manager Simon Schuster in New York City. It took 16 to 39. And it only did that because I didn't know any better. If I had said 19 years or 20 years or president, uh, that would have happened. So I know without a shadow of a doubt all of this works and I know you have many instances in your life. We wanna apply these very same focus and desires, this intense desire to get what we want in our spiritual life. Because the process is the same. And we have to do the work to make the changes to go from where we are today to what we want going into 2020 with that perfect vision. And Napoleon Hill said this, when your desires are strong enough, you will appear to possess superhuman powers to achieve. I had people say to me, how did you get to Vice President Simon Schuster? They had no clue. started when I was 16 and it was every day every year that was the way I went to sleep at night seeing that on the door it's important if it's important to you you will find a way if it's not you will find an excuse we see that all around us do we not we do it for ourselves we say, well, I want to do that, and we don't get there. Why? Because we didn't do the work. We didn't stay focused. We didn't have the intense desire to make it happen. And then we begin to justify it with excuses. Well, you know, it was the economy. Or is that minister at Unity Harrisburg held me back? Or whatever. Might have been the choir leader. Or your spouse. Right? Or whoever's president. It has nothing to do with anything. It has to do with you and what your focus and intense desire is and give yourself no excuses anymore. See, no, no mas, no more. John Lennon said this, part of me thinks I'm a loser and part of me thinks I'm God Almighty. You ever have that feeling? Well, most of it, or a lot of us in life spent time thinking we're a loser. But what he's saying is we have a choice. We have a focus. I mean, John Lennon was making a statement here more true than 95% uh, of the preachers who were preaching when he said this. 
He was showing you there's an option. You don't have the right to believe either. It's your God-given right. What are you going to choose for you? What are you going to focus on? What are you going to do today or tomorrow that's going to get you to the place where you want to go? Ignore all the noise. Focus on your work. And watch what happens in 2020 and in this decade. There is no lack. There is no limitation in God. It's only in you and me. And as we learn to drop those human stuff, all the God that's within us, all the I am, all the Christ, all the Tao, whatever word it works for you. As we drop that human lack and limitation away, what comes through is that light and love, shining brighter and brighter. And the ultimate is what the master teacher Jesus said, you are the light of the world, not, not him. He didn't say I was the light of the world, he said you are. I am the light of the world, where's I am is inside you. And you and I are the light to this world today. And the more we remove all the stuff we talked about, and the more we can stay focused with the desire to be more and more light and love, is how we're gonna change this world. One person at a time, getting connected with more of the light and love that's within them. Let's go to prayer. Let's go to the silence prayer. As we take a couple of deep breaths, rhythmic breaths, try to get in the inhale to maybe count of four, exhale count of four. All the universe is in unison, is universe, one voice, one verse. Rhythm, relaxed. if it works for you to turn your spiritual eyes up which activates the pineal gland activates the seeing spiritual seeing of the divine light it flows into our minds and our heads and the best you can just focus on no thought just relax into perfection of the divine. And then let that energy flow down into your heart. Allow your heart space to open. It will do what you say. If you say, open up, relax. Let me feel more love. And then let that energy flow into your belly. And feel the peace and the joy and the love. is the likeness and image that we were created in perfect peace, perfect joy, perfect love. And somewhere along the line we just forgot, got too busy, forgot who we were. And in this moment of stillness, deeply feel who you truly are. Feel it and know it. And know that it's all good. It's all beautiful. And it's all true.
teacher said, if you will recognize this every day, this will be the energy, the vibe, the consciousness that will go before you and straighten your path with light and love. And in this season of light and love, let's stay more and more connected with the divine. And let this Christmas be the best Christmas ever. And so it is.